I feel like 2023 was probably tail end of 2022, 2023 were kind of the big times when you saw a lot of talk about AI in the media and you saw wide scale interest, if not adoption. Uh, things like ChatGPT and stuff became commonplace household names and you saw a lot of people interacting with them, using them in business, personally, uh, and stuff that was already there became kind of widespread. Yeah, I think, I think what's happened in 2023 is you're, you're beginning to see people, obviously, chat GPT, open AIs work uh, within large language models. You can see AI really go mainstream, whereas before it was, it was kind of niche, it was uh, reserved in a lot of cases of, of kind of bigger companies, but now smaller companies are actually beginning to address AI. I think really the, the kind of generative AI, the, especially around chat GPT, was, was interesting, but that kind of sparked, obviously, other advances as well. You know, you had other uh, suppliers like Google, AWS, etc., uh, bringing out their own language models as well. So you are seeing now a lot of heat within that space, a lot of technologies, uh, a lot of companies who are competing with each other. And I think in 2024, that will probably only get more competitive. In 2024, I can see it being utilised in a lot of the same ways it was in 2023, but more at scale and by more people. But inevitably, I think there'll also be new kind of novel applications that we've not seen yet. Uh, things like in cybersecurity, uh, in response to growing threats, you might see novel applications of AI. You might see it in business processes being used in places it wasn't before. Um, but if you look at people's personal lives and uh, just personally in business, people in their work day to day might be using it a lot more for things that are kind of mundane and routine tasks. I think you'll also see things like, uh, you know, Copilot, what makes of Copilot, for example, which is pretty mainstream. It's now in obviously the, the, the biggest uh, office application in the world. Copilot being able to do all sorts of things that, that just weren't, weren't possible. It kind of, was, was released end of 2023, but I think we'll really see it get traction in 2024. I think what you'll also see in 2024 is just the the branch out from a lot of people calling models, calling large language models like ChatGPT, calling them on the web to them being available on, on mobile. Uh, Apple, for example, has been very quiet in terms of releases uh, now, but they will probably be working away on uh, on the models that can be installed in phones and, and available for AI. You know, we already have those models, but we don't have them at the kind of large language model level, uh, quite to the same ability as things like ChatGPT. But you'll begin to see them on phones. So obviously, Google with Android have a lot of uh, a lot of room for innovation there in, in terms of putting AI in phones, be able to take pictures of things. You know, uh, recognise them, be able to. Uh, do all sorts of things that they probably haven't even imagined yet on the what we'll call the edge of the internet on phones and devices. Uh, so I think you'll see a lot of that. Uh, I think you'll also see ChatGPT, uh, OMEI improve what they have already, and uh, maybe a move towards more agents where you know ChatGPT is is answering questions, you know, doing completions. But I think you'll probably see a lot more, a lot more agents that actually go out and do things that a lot more the heat within that that actual area as well. Yeah, I think also it should be noted that if we tried to make these predictions at the beginning of 2022 or 2023, <laughs> we would have been massively off. So whilst it seems clear that things are going to get more integrated deeply with, uh, say, for example, edge devices like mobile phones, you know, you could see uh, a small LLM running on your phone, which integrates with all apps and kind of is able to deliver you more value in that way at the cutting edge uh, with these you know massive titans of industry that are plowing money into it it's very difficult to see where it goes um just like in 2022 or 2023 so it's really interesting i think it's also very difficult to to tell what is actually going on behind closed doors in some of the some mm. of the companies as well uh, i think you, you are seeing a huge, huge investment uh, w within these companies, but you're also seeing a huge investment 
uh, made up of lots of small investments by companies actually now beginning to to look for uh, for AI with, within the business. What can AI do for them? How can they how can they improve their business processes using AI? So I think people woke up in twenty twenty three and started actually. You're seeing some people get get a bit concerned about just how much can be done maybe how much can be done with an ai that uh, you know it's somebody's job for example but i think you'll actually see in 2024 more people implement those things down the kind of almost like the food chain of companies you know from larger companies already doing some of this down to medium-sized companies down to small small companies so i think we're very interesting you do probably also see the, a shortage of ai experts as well there is people who can actually can actually uh, implement know know the capabilities of these solutions as well. So it's going to be very exciting. Uh, there will be a lot of churn and there will be a lot of change. So I think for me, actually, uh, we obviously have large language models. Uh, the whole chat GPT thing. You're you're seeing this. You're seeing this. Uh, this trend. Personally, myself, I would like to see more agents. Uh, with an AI that that kind of go out and, and perform quite complex tasks uh, rather than just I suppose answer questions or generate text or generate images etc. It'd be good good to have some for example that just you know you say uh, I want for a holiday you've look up my previous ten years of holidays uh, in the spreadsheet and go off find me a holiday give me three options and then. Uh, I'll agree to one and then just go and book the holiday for me and arrange all my travel and arrange all my hotels because you know what I like to do. Those those sort of things and those those are beginning to to, to be within the art of the possible. Uh, and obviously you could you could use that. I've got a travel example there, but you could use it in, in lots and lots of different examples. So I think agents will be I'm really interested to see what happens with with agents about being able to perform the sort of tasks that would take humans, you know, a, a day to go and research themselves and and do things themselves, make choices, etc., and 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 use strategies. You know, for for example, an agent could use a strategy that you might like to to save money on airfares, but spend money on holiday or on hotel, sorry, or you may want to, you know, always stay in a luxury hotel, you know, whatever you you visit a city, but you don't mind staying in a bed and breakfast whenever you go to a, a country place. You know those those kind of things could be could be quite interesting where they can actually make those decisions for you and just and just take away a lot of the drudgery of various tasks that we we all have to do day to day yeah i mean it's kind of it's difficult to tell when we're in the thick of it uh, where we are but i think looking back we'll probably look at this time as saying you know we've got these llms that can do what they're told pretty well and they are generative so they're going to produce things that are novel um data images potentially video in the uh, coming couple of months maybe even but really i think it's been able to make them agentic and really that is what a lot of the workforce are doing they're not being told exactly what to do you know they're having to make decisions about what to go and find what to go and uh, get or collate into their work uh, to then produce something and right now they maybe fall a bit short of that uh, and a lot of the times that's maybe why we can't automate certain parts of businesses so i think there'll be a lot of value to be reaped if we can reliably make these large language models act as agents in the workforce yeah and i, and I, I think you are perhaps seeing people beginning certainly in kind of small businesses say but probably in big business as well uh, where they begin to stitch together conversations with ChatGPT, it's like write me a write me a marketing plan. Okay, now write me the content for my homepage. Now write me the content for a blog on whatever. Now now do this. Mm-hmm. It's actually, th- these things have been have been stitched together. But now you could say, you know, I'm a I'm a travel agent. To go back to my previous example, write me a marketing plan and implement a website for me. At, at that level, yeah. whether, whether we'll actually get there in twenty twenty four is obviously another another thing, but I think we'll see those the the kind of the interactions where we bounce between ChatGPT or or somebody's 
the AI language models producing things and, and responding to to humans who are then kind of actually just orchestrating the process. I think you'll begin to see AI agents that can just orchestrate that process from an instruction right at the start and get an end result uh, there. So mm -hmm. I think that'll be really interesting. That be, but there'll, there'll probably be lots and lots of things. I mean, there's this things in medicine, things in, in science that the people are doing a lot of work in, in AI that's, that's mm -hmm. not even hitting the news really, you know, it, it, things like cancer research and stuff, uh, any of these big data sets, there's, there's a lot of work going on there. I think one of the big problems uh, that, that people are, are one of the concerns, I suppose, uh, that people are highlighting is, is things like privacy. I think people are worried that, that they put data into an AI model and then the provider of that AI model then uses it to train uh, on maybe private data, maybe people's names, maybe people's medical history, whatever uh, that would be, and then it spits out in the future something identifiable. Mm -hmm. uh, so the, I think those can be addressed, it can be addressed in a, in a few ways. One, one you talk about where people's data actually resides, does it reside within uh, an area that they're comfortable with, like it's UK data being processed within the UK, for example. Uh, there's so they want to know where where the data sits in a in an AI. Where's it, where's it going? They also want to have some sort of guarantees that that data is only used for answering the question or generating a document, and that it's not being saved anywhere. It's not being used to train. So the, the idea is that if my name goes into an AI, it's not going to be spit out at another side uh, there. So. I think you've seen those kind of mm -hmm. those kind of concerns, but a lot of the tech companies obviously realise these are concerns, so they are actually addressing those in, in their terms of conditions. They're not they're not storing, they're not training on uh, on that sort of personal personal data. Yeah, another side to that, obviously, also is uh, we've seen a kind of rise in smaller LLMs where people are trying to achieve. Uh, similar loss with less and less uh, large language models. That opens the door to being able to run things locally and not have to make API calls to these uh, large language models where you're sending data externally. You know, you can you can be running these models. It might right now be not the most cost effective method of doing it, but I do think 2024, 2025, over the next few years, that is going to be a trend where we can achieve a similar level of performance with a much smaller model um, because what we have seen over over the last year and a half two years is these models uh, have become extremely powerful but really we've just been growing the size exponentially almost and really efficiency hasn't been at the forefront it's been all about size to just uh, kind of it's almost a new Moore's law with a uh, parameter number of parameters on these models. I do think you'll see more off offline models. In fact, I mean they're they're ready. They're ready there. You know, yeah. quite a few quite a few people are offering offline models that that will become even even more. I think the other big driver on that is cost because if you if if you're running some of the models and and making API calls, then those are expensive because they're using a lot of compute. They're relatively expensive, eh, not not expensive in individual individual calls, but compared to a, an offline model, eh, if you can get the same performance in a in a smaller processor, effectively a, a smaller machine, eh, then you're in a position whereby the the cost of each inference on a on a large language model, for example would be a lot cheaper than running a huge cloud infrastructure. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think all of the big providers are trying to bring things down in terms of in terms of cost. I think you will see a lot of, a lot of work. And, that, and that's just that's generally how it goes on any new technology. You know, people build it first of all and then they, they, they effectively miniaturize it. You know, if you look at the, the very first mobile phones or huge, huge mobile phones, they're, they're now down to, you know, uh, the last batteries that last all day and, and fit in your pocket and fact probably last two days. I think you'll see similar type of optimization uh, within some of the AI uh, work being done.
the, we've talked a lot about large language models, but of course there's lots of other models out there. It's just that the large language models are, are kind of the most popular and, and in some ways the most interesting right here in the beginning of 2024. I think within AI beyond 2024, it's, it's always the further out you go into the future, the more difficult it is to, to predict. When I did a computer science degree, we didn't have PCs, we didn't have the internet, uh, we didn't have mobile devices, uh, other than maybe walkie-talkies, something like that, based on radio. So you, when you look at that world, it's a hugely different world uh, than, than what we're sitting in just now, because if you went into a coffee shop, I uh, don't really think they had proper coffee shops uh, back in the day either. But if you look at coffee shops and you go in and you see everybody looking at a small slate with a screen on it, anybody from 35, 40 years ago would say, it's like, what's going on here? It just looks like, like science fiction. You certainly wouldn't predict 40 years in the future, but even predicting a few years in the future, it's the pace of technology has, has changed so much that... The ChatGPT large language model work that was done uh, and what it can now achieve, uh, you know, systems like Midjourney, etc. There's now a lot of work that is kind of coming to fruition within within AI, and I think predicting 2024 is going to be difficult enough. But going beyond 2025, I think we'll see a lot of change. Certainly a lot of change within uh, the workforce. An area that I've been involved in uh, before is, is kind of music, for example, in music production, music recording, etc. And you're seeing how uh, systems are changing within that, which is totally outside the large language models, but AI has been... So, so it used to be back in the day when, you know, p people recorded songs, etc. They'd go in, they'd record it on tape, they would, they would, if they had to change things, they would uh, have to basically uh, re-record over that that tape, uh, etc. If they sung out a tune, they'd have to re-sing again. Now you're seeing a lot of uh, a lot of technologies there that now allow people digitally to to, to basically uh, fix problems uh, that would not be possible to fix in the past. Now they're using AI to do that to recognise that a guitar is slightly out of tune, so change the tuning of a guitar to to take a voice, and we've all seen this already, to take a voice and change it. You know, seeing jobs like uh, people used to master um, before they, they put audio onto streaming platforms, etc. Now you're seeing AI uh, tools that can actually do that automatically. Uh, that's just one area. You'll begin, you begin to see uh, people write documents, people who do various jobs will now either have AI assistants doing a large part of their work or or so in some ways perhaps even completely replacing those jobs and, and people will move on to do to do other jobs. I think you will see, if people have been predicting it, it's not really much of a prediction, but I think you will see uh, several changes in the labour market. In the same way that actually when I did computer science, the, there were no web designers Hey, because the web mm -hmm. hadn't really been invented uh, yet. There were no. What would you? Would you do? I'm a. I'm a mobile phone salesperson. Uh, what's What's a mobile phone? You know. So you you'll see that a lot of those jobs have mm -hmm. uh, have have come along. Obviously, there's been salespeople since uh, uh, since a year uh, dot really. But social media influencer. Yeah. For example, what's a social media influencer? If you if you'd have told our grandparents that that would be a job somebody would do, yeah. they wouldn't even know what what that job was, yeah. uh, and we don't know what the jobs are going to be in the future based on the impact of, of AI. But I, I believe there will be there will be jobs in the future because we're going to need jobs to keep the economy going. Will we be working five mm -hmm. days a week in twenty thirty twenty thirty five? Who knows? It really yeah, it's hard really to tell. I mean, really yeah, we also, I think one thing that the past few years has shown is that our assumptions that we hold quite deeply to be true can be proven wrong uh, by this technology. But one thing that I think if you'd ask most people in, say, 2018, if creativity would be the thing that would be automated before some of the more kind of deemed simple tasks, they would have said that was crazy. You know, you get a lot of people say, well, 
uh, humans can paint this artwork or create this kind of song, AI couldn't do that. And what 2022, 2023 has shown is that creativity can be automated to an extent. We don't know what extent yet, but the graph is almost exponential pretty much. Um, and we don't know where that'll finish, you know. So yes, we still value human creativity, but it's gonna be a lot of question marks around how we tell the difference where do we value the end product or do we value how it was created uh, and then we look at what our role is in that kind of society then if cost of creativity goes towards zero where do we fit in to the workforce in that sense it's difficult to think about right now yeah and it's and it's not even i mean creativity is a good one it's not just even creativity in terms of people will think about creativity in a you, you know, you write a song, you paint a picture, you, you do that, but there's creativity in professions as well. Lawyers coming up with uh, strategies for legal cases, uh, you know, tax advisors mm -hmm. coming up with tax planning, uh, kind of mechanisms for multinational companies. These are all incredibly expensive, incredibly well paid uh, kind of professions. There's not anything there I don't think that could actually be be done uh, in the future, but it couldn't be done in the future with, with AI because you are saying, uh, you know, the, the people will say, well, you couldn't do my job because it's creative. People are always saying, you couldn't do my job because my job could not be automated. Even software developers, you begin to see mm -hmm. uh, things like ChatGPT writing code, etc. And it's not writing whole systems as yet, but you are beginning to see a, a, lot, of, a lot of different... Uh, in some ways it's an amplifier in some ways it's an assistant for, for people so perhaps uh, perhaps it tells you the strategy for uh, for tax planning or the, it tells you the options for strategy for a legal case perhaps it tells you the, the, the some advice on treating a cancer patient what the best mm -hmm. cocktail of drugs and uh, treatments would be for that person based on not just the experience of a doctor who's got 40 years and, and is mm -hmm. now, uh, of experience of treating patients and is now an oncologist, but in terms of data that might cover hundreds of years of doctors, perhaps thousands of years of mm -hmm. doctors' experience merged into one AI that can actually look at the data across lots and lots of cases, you know, millions, tens of millions, hundreds of millions of cases, and then actually see patterns for what works and what, what doesn't work. So it'll really be it'll really be interesting to see how that whole landscape changes. Mm -hmm. I think. Especially uh, I don't think there's anything that's out of bounds there. You know, people there's I saw a, I saw some a news article on like climate change and the uh, installing solar panels. And this wouldn't be it's not really not really AI but People begin to think of, of different ways of doing things. Amazing how technology uh, innovates. The, installing solar panels, one of the, one of the biggest uh, blockers to doing that in, in, in scale is actually the manual labour involved in doing that. You get big panels that have to be installed in kind of deserts, etc. They're now they're now automating that with robots, and I think robots is another another area. You'll see DeepMind doing some some work on. Uh, on robots and r robotics, and you'll see a lot of vision systems, a lot mm -hmm. of kind of, uh, you know, language understanding is now becoming a kind of mainstream thing uh, mm -hmm. as well. So I think you'll you'll see as as people as, as some of the the more maybe mundane software development kind of professional tasks mm -hmm. become more automated. You'll see people move on to some of the more difficult tasks that maybe AI isn't yet addressing yet. Or, mm -hmm. You know, so it's going to be very exciting. I think it's always scary, new change, when, yeah, again, I'll go back again, when I was a, a young software engineer, people were worried about computers putting them out of a job, so I've spent my whole career with every, people worried the web would put people out of a job, people worried, mm -hmm. that, you know, AI now will put people out of a job. It's certainly the biggest wave I've seen, but I, I don't really believe that uh, it will have some of the negative, there will be negative impacts, there's always negative impacts. Uh, but there'll be a lot of positive impacts as well and we shouldn't forget about the positive impacts. Yeah, I think also for 
businesses more specifically, you know, it really is just trying to stay on top of it and get as far into it as you can right now, learn about it as much as you can, develop a strategy. For a lot of people with ChatGPT and things like that, it was a kind of, it's almost like seeing is believing. People were talking about this for years and years before, talking about the kind of way that this was going and it almost sometimes takes it to happen for everybody to react. The businesses that weren't as reactionary and were being proactive with their strategy have probably reaped rewards from that and I think those rewards will only get better with time. If you, The longer you've got in the game, uh, you're going to know more about it and be able to react to new technologies. I think the other thing is the, is the negative impact of that as well. Whilst we're saying if you, if you actually start looking into AI just now, then you can reap the benefits of it. You're also seeing, certainly in conversations I've had, you're seeing people are saying, well, I don't really know whether this will affect us or not. I don't, I don't think so. We've done it the same way as we've always done it. I don't, I don't think I'll, I'll, I need to really look at this, which is exactly what people did during the web. Things like e-commerce, folk like uh, Woolworths, basically mm -hmm. went out of business for like Debenham so who didn't have a an e commerce strategy were, were kinda of taken over by, you know, companies like Amazon, companies yeah. like ASOS uh, in the UK, who Boohoo, etc. You're seeing a lot you wouldn't you couldn't really imagine not having e commerce now. But a lot of the companies that didn't embrace e commerce are now out of business and it'll be the same with with AI. A lot of the companies that don't embrace the particular AI that will help them be more efficient will probably be in quite a bit of danger. Mm -hmm. I, I would not like to run a taxi company when Uber get self-driving cars because I, I really don't see how you can compete.